Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, family. Welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. You know, it amazes me um, what the dominant society is able to get away with. It just amazes me, um, you know, the kind of garbage and rhetoric that they spew and um, as if nobody got feelings, as if if it's okay with them, then they can do it. The insult um, and disrespect of, of different people, poor people, uh, poor white people. Um, and, and to me, it's, it's amazing. I was looking at a Kenosha killing. And no, not uh, Jacob. Not him. I looked at uh, the white boy, the white guy who got shot point blank range in the head in his own driveway. Um, and the cops in the Kenosha tried to cover it up. Shot him point blank range with his hand cuffed across the vehicle shot him point blank in the head. So um, when I see the ruthlessness in these people that are supposed to be um, enforcing the law, it further lets me know that they're a bunch of thugs. Some of them are thugs in blue suits. And they're the biggest gang. And they have some of them have gang members in there. They're gang members that are totally unethical. To, uh, gang members... Um, that have been allowed to run amok in every city and state in these United States operating like patty rollers and slave catchers when it comes to black people. And it is totally unacceptable. So far unto the language that they disrespect us in. Just talk to us like we're not even there. I'm going to give you an example. What we had to put up with, um, somebody said, what is systemic? I go to the bank um, not far from me in the suburb. Well, just put it, it's a, it's a North Shore area. So, it's a predominantly rich white folk area, okay? My, my brother went to school over there. Dominican High School. For those of y'all who know. So I was in Shorewood, Whitefish Bay. Went to the bank to draw money out of account that I'm on. No problem. None whatsoever. Well, I only went there because I was over in that uh, area. Because the same bank is two blocks away from me. And of course, when you go to the Negro Bank, not only do they make you show a million and 12 documents, they won't let me withdraw the money because the person is not right there with me. That type of crazy uh, systemic mindset where you just... Everything you do to black people, just try to make them feel negative and down in their spirit. Everything that you have to give to them, try to make them feel like they're less than. It happens all the time. Keep on pouring salt in their wounds so they can feel bad about themselves. And that makes us feel better about them, ourselves. You know, straight narc uh, behavior. You know, and I continue to say narcissistic behavior transcends race. Trans is color. However, most of the dominant society or the elite group that are running America are totally narcs and are totally insane, to say the least. This is what I mean. Now, I'm not done with that congressman 
Higgins. I'm not done with him because I don't appreciate the fact that he threatened. In fact, and black uh, militia that have been peacefully standing out, going by the law, going by the uh, Constitution and what it presents, have checked in with every city that they visit, have done everything the right way. Okay? Now, yet this Congressman Higgins had the nerve to threaten them, but never threaten none of the white militia who really have been agitators, spitting on police, doing all kinds of mayhem and all kinds of crazy stuff. They haven't been condemned, nor do I hear anybody say anything, because it's almost like it's an expectation for white folks to have guns. But as soon as black people start talking about exercising their constitutional right to bear arms, then it's always, all of a sudden, uh, it's a problem. Like, because we get a gun, we're going to shoot all the white people up. It's like, you know what? If slavery really did a job on y'all just as well as it did on us, and if you could get out of the mindset that we're going to do to you what you did to us, we possibly can coexist together. Possibly. If you leave us the fuck alone. Okay? But this is the kind of stuff that black a black uh, uh, person will never be able to get it away with. And I'm sick of that. I'm sick of it. And everybody's sick of it. That's the same you as me. The Opal, Opalos Police Department officer busted alongside now Congressman Clay Higgins for lying to Internal Affairs in 2007 about an unjustified beating of a bystander has been on the congressman payroll since shortly after Higgins took office three and a half years ago. They should get. They, he need to be out of office. John Chaunton, a former Opelousas patrolman, helped Higgins violently take a man, Andre Red Richard, to the ground. After Richard pulled up outside the house that Higgins, Charlton, and other police officers were searching, an internal affairs report found that Higgins and Charlton tried to cover up the incident by lying about it. This is your senator. This is the senator. Higgins hired a Charlton um, as a field representative for his congressional office in Feb early February 2017, just over a month after Higgins, a Lafayette Republican, was sworn to replace the party uh, former representative Charles Bustany. Charlton was paid $69,000 in 2019, our record show. Y'all see this good old boy network? You see how it worked? Hello? Hold on, hold on. My father? Who do you white people think you are? My father. Again, I'm sorry, y'all. That story unraveled after another police officer again witnessed the incident and contradicted Charlton and Higgins. Higgins later admitted lying, acknowledging that he struck Richard and apologized for his actions. Then Opalus Police Chief Perry Gallo recommended Higgins be demoted, removed from the SWAT team, and suspended for 160 hours without pay. 
the Open City Council signed off on that discipline. But in the midst of another internal affairs investigation involving Higgins and Charlton, Higgins quit before his punishment could be imposed. The second investigation found Higgins and Charlton bought beer together at a Laplace gas station in uniform and driving marked police cars en route to a SWAT uh, competition. That probe, which Higgins was said to have, was the real reason behind his resignation. It also looked um, what, into whether Higgins and other members of the SWAT team had disparaged Gallo during the trip. Gallo said Monday that Charlton was also disciplined for lying, but couldn't recall the length of his suspension. During the openless police uh, chief, Martin McClendon, didn't know immediately respond to inquiries on Monday. Gallo, who left the department in 2014, said that Charlton accepted the discipline instead of resigning like Higgins and remain an opolis policeman for a period of time after the incident. Higgins, meanwhile, soon landed a job with the Port Bear Police Department. You see what I'm saying? This is what they do. This is how you protect white people. This is how they protect their own. This is how they do. Trust me. If it had been a black officer, his black ass would be gone. Remember, remember Christopher Dorton. In 2011, he was hired by the St. The Laundry Sheriff's uh, Office, where his tough-talking, crime-stopping TV segments propelled him to viral to online fame. Sergeant Landry Sheriff Bobby Goodrow said in an interview last week that he would have never hired Higgins had he been aware of the 2007 incident. Why? Because what you you don't put it, they record don't follow them. Higgins quit the sheriff's office amid controversy over the insults he heard at suspects during clips. Goudreau said that he found some of the comments unprofessional and he had asked Higgins to tone down his trash talking. Goudreau said that he was poised to fire Higgins in 2016 when the brash deputy abruptly called a press conference to announce his resignation, claiming that Goodros was trying to muzzle him. Goodros accused of Higgins of repeatedly defiant orders and trying to profit in ways that ran afoul of the sheriff's office, office's policy and state law, including spending time on the clock hawking Captain Higgins' merchandise and trying to line up unpaid uh, speaking gigs. Emails later obtained by the news outlets, including Lafayette Independent and KATC TV, also showed that Higgins pitching a television show that was to star himself. In a December 2015 email to a producer, Higgins listed the potential cast of a proposed reality show featuring Higgins joining SWAT raids around the country. Among the regular interaction characters Higgins uh, sketched into the show was Charlton, who Higgins, writing in the third person, described as a retired SWAT cop, as his best friend, workout partner, and assistant sensei. Mm hmm. Really? Charlton, huh? Well, they partners in crime. Rob Anderson, a Democrat who's unsuccessfully ran against Higgins in 2018, damn, and it's, so y'all like this trash, huh? And is challenging him again this year, called on Higgins to fire Charlton. Anderson uh, accused Higgins of cronyism for hiring Charlton and claimed without citing specific evidence that Charlton's job announced amount, amounted to a reward for lying. As part of that 2707 cover up. And it was. It was. This is the kind of stuff we sick of. Not just black folk and brown folk. Yeah, white folks that sick of it too. 
You know what I'm saying? We're sick of this. Anderson also ripped Higgins over the incident and contended it should disqualify him from office. That he has a say in police reform legislation makes me sick to my stomach, Anderson said of Higgins. Now he out here threatening, in fact, this man is a problem. And he needs to be removed. He needs to be removed. There's no place. Donald Trump is bad enough. You got to get rid of all these rays. You got to cut out all this cancer. Cut it out. Get rid of it. And then maybe some of us can have a quality of life that we deserve. I'll see you in the next video.